not a baking pro in the kitchen well with this box cake mix hack no one will ever know because this tastes just like homemade hey guys welcome back to the channel today i am making a good old-fashioned southern caramel cake the old-fashioned kind but it's real simple real easy so i have two videos this one's for the cake and at the end of this video i'm going to leave the one for the icing y'all if you cannot bake from scratch it is okay there's too much shaming out here going on sis if you are busy you got work going on and you got the kids and you got this and that and you don't have time to measure out and do all that no problem at all i got you covered nobody will ever know this cake was from a box let's get into this recipe and these are the ingredients you're going to need you need one duck and heinz butter golden cake mix three eggs plus one egg white one stick of butter i like salted but you're welcome to use unsalted a half a cup of milk plus one tablespoon of milk one fourth cup of water you need vanilla extract or vanilla flavoring whichever you have i like a little bit of almond extract but that is not necessary and one vanilla pudding mix if i've missed any measurements the full recipe is down in the drop down description box below this video also please watch the full video so that you can get the right order of the ingredients to get the egg white out, all you do is let it drip through a cracked egg and down through a fork. So before we get started, you want to make sure that your oven is preheated to 350 degrees and make sure your pans are prepared. You can prepare them with flour and shortening or just use a regular baking spray. Either one is fine. We have our cake mix here and we're going to empty it into the mixing bowl. We're gonna add our milk, water. Now for the vanilla pudding mix, you're just gonna use half. Don't use the whole thing, we're just using half. So we're gonna pinch it about there and add it in. Now if your measurement is off a little bit, it's not gonna make a difference at all. So now we wanna let the beater down and we're gonna mix it just a little bit. We just wanna combine that, get it moistened. Okay, that's fine. Now we're gonna add in our butter. I did this in the microwave. I didn't wanna melt it all the way. You don't want it super, super hot because you don't wanna cook the eggs. So we just want to melt it to warm and a little liquidy. Now don't make a mess in your microwave. What you wanna do is put the stick of butter in your microwave with the opening, with the flaps face down. Microwave it for about 10 to 12 seconds, then turn it right side up and microwave it for about 10 seconds. And you have to watch it because every microwave is different, different wattages and everything. You wanna watch it and make sure that it's coming out just as desired. And now we wanna add in our eggs. It's always best to crack your eggs. And I didn't do this before. I usually used to crack my eggs in the bowl, but everybody was going, no, no, no. I always crack them outside the bowl in a separate dish because one bad egg with blood in it or, or whatever it is can mess up your whole cake. So add them one at a time to a separate dish and then add them in. So we're gonna add one at a time and then we're going to mix on low just to get it incorporated go ahead and add the second one get that second one mixed in a little bit and then add the third make sure your ingredients are at room temperature they will mix much better And now we're going to add in the egg white. Just a little bit. Now we're going to add in our vanilla 
and the almond extract. Now, like I said, this is an addition that I like. You do not have to use it, but it just adds a little something that's very different and just homey. So I love almond extract. We're going to add in one teaspoon of vanilla. Everybody has their preference. Some people are fine with imitations. Some people only use pure. So use what you want to use. I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of the almond extract. And you can just smell it. If I could wear it as perfume, I would. It smells so good to me. But let's go ahead and mix that in. I'm going to get that incorporated and we're going to go ahead and turn it up to medium and we're going to beat it like this for about three minutes. You can stop it halfway through. Make sure that your sides are scraped down. Usually mine's gets it real good. I have a scraper, but there was one spot right here that was not getting mixed. So just eye everything and make sure because you don't want to get to three minutes and you still have, you know, something that wasn't mixed and then you mess up your cake over mixing it. Okay, we're done mixing. Let's get it into the pans. Scrape down your beaters to make sure you have all the cake mixture in. This cake batter smells so good. Let's go ahead and get it into the pans. I'm using two seven inches because I want my cake to come out pretty tall. And you just want to kind of shake it, level. So let's go ahead and get these into a 350 degree oven. When a toothpick comes out clean from being inserted into the cake layers, they are ready. When you take them out, make sure that they cool in the pan for about 10 minutes. And then let them cool on a baking rack for about two hours and then split them in half and then it's time to frost the cakes okay let's get started this icing is so pretty and so smooth and it tastes so good so i hope you all also go over and watch the video for the frosting of this cake the actual caramel frosting y'all oh my goodness this cake was easy to make and the frosting, as you can see here, hopefully, is just as easy. And it tastes so good. You cannot buy this in the store. You have to make it. So I'm trying to smooth it, or not smooth it. I'm trying to dollop it on because this is a very tender cake. And you don't want to push real hard trying to uh, smooth out the icing everywhere. So I'm just kind of dolloping it on and then I'm going to smooth it after that. I'm going to have some nice layers of caramel in between. Okay, so put the desired amount that you like in between layers. I like mine's like kind of medium, not a thin layer, but not a super thick one at the same time. think that will be good and just kind of smooth it to get an even little coating in the middle there that looks so good and push it to the edge a little bit you don't want it right on the edge but and there we go so now we're going to add the next little layer 
got a little whoopsies with one of my layers, so it's kind of puckered here in the back, but we're going to cover that up with the frosting. It is a okay. And now we're going to put the frosting on the next layer. And if the sides look rough on your cake, it is okay. It's going to be covered up by that pretty frosting because they don't always come out of the pan perfectly, but we're going to make the cake look perfect. How about that? All right, let's go ahead and push that frosting to the edge somewhat. Now we're going to put that next layer on top. Really should have been putting this downward, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, y'all. We are on the third layer. So we are going to get this kind of spread around on the top or not spread but kind of dolloped a little bit and then we'll spread it i cannot tell y'all how good it smells in this kitchen i know i said it once before i think i said it in the frosting video <laughs> but it smells so good in here the cake mixed with that caramel frosting Making it at the same time. Oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Now, if you would like to make something from scratch, go ahead, but make sure you use this frosting recipe as well. I added brown sugar. Most people just use um, sugar, butter, and evaporated milk, but I have added brown sugar and something else. To take it over the top and mm, it tastes good here we go like I said it might not be pretty yet but it's gonna be Ooh, and it's gooey a little bit and just oh look at that okay we're gonna get this fourth little layer frosted up here And then we're gonna let it kind of run down the sides and we'll get the sides of the cake. Had to do a close-up because I wanted to get that caramel going in. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Wow. See, only a few additions and it tastes just like homemade. I cook from scratch and sometimes I use the box when I get busy. Sis, it is okay. You just want something good on the table that says I love you. And this definitely does. Hey guys, so my husband's going to taste it for me. <laughs> so this is the caramel cake the old-fashioned southern caramel cake he's gonna take a taste for me you have to preface this icing is not my favorite okay he wants y'all to know icing is not his favorite thing how it tastes pretty good pretty good yeah tastes like some more tastes like some more all right i'll take that <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, good. He said it is pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. Moist. Moist. All right. Moist. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that is the old-fashioned Southern caramel cake with the homemade caramel icing from back in the day that grandma and auntie them make so make sure you all click at the end of this video i'm going to bring up the um the video for the frosting the homemade frosting it's very easy so go ahead and click on that and y'all like comment share and subscribe but most of all y'all share this video it's the holiday time and a lot of people want to know how to make this cake all right. Love you all. Be blessed. And I'll see you guys next time right back here on Tracy's Place.